back to Block TV. It's time now for Chain Breakers. Now, Bitcoin is never a stagnant game, constantly in need of updates and developments to de with, deal with the three key issues of blockchain. Of course, I'm talking about security, speed, and scalability. And today I am joined by Bitcoin Core developer at Blockstream, Andrew Chow, to help us break down some of these key elements and developments that are taking place in the Bitcoin network. Andrew, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, so to kick things off, Andrew, I want to start with, uh, I guess, a fairly broad question you can maybe help narrow down for us. What would you say is, a, as a Bitcoin core developer, what is the key issue holding back Bitcoin at the moment in 2019? Um, I would say a lot of it is a lack of developer expertise and developer funding. Um, Right now, uh, in order to get contributors to like Bitcoin Core, uh, people have to volunteer their time and effort. And for the most part, they don't get paid for it until much later into uh, their contribution career. It, it takes quite a bit of time before you can get funding to uh, really work on Bitcoin Core. Right. Certainly, uh, I guess that is a, a key problem to being faced when it comes to a, a decentralized network like Bitcoin, right? I mean, when you don't have a, a sort of central authority that can do uh, hiring and firing and pay, pay the bills, keep the lights on, as it were, you know, Bitcoin as a, as a decentralized network has the strength of uh, all the strengths of a decentralized network, but also some of the issues that are faced in that sense. Is there any solution you could see to solving that? Is there you know, a, a fund that can be set up some way of making it so developers can be paid for their hard work in uh, developing the Bitcoin network? Um, I mean, it's really just comes, uh, it just comes down to Bitcoin companies wanting to support Bitcoin by hiring developers to work on the open source software. And this is kind of what Blockstream does. We have a research team where uh, some developers work on core and also on some other things, uh, as well as a couple, as well as um, many Blockstream internal stuff. And we have noticed that there are other companies doing this. For example, there's uh, Chaincode Labs and Square Crypto, which are both companies that are really set up to just pay developers to continue to develop on Bitcoin. And so more companies like that, and even just companies to uh, hire people to work on open source in general would be great. Right. I mean, as the scale of the network grows, as uh, you know, greater adoption does take place, and generally, you know, uh, overall there is an upward trajectory in the market. Uh, do you think that that uh, sort of those companies coming into the space to want to seek to strengthen and build the network as a whole? Do you think that is going to increase? Or uh, do you see these companies becoming rarer and rarer as people are more focused on the bottom line and uh, more exclusively just on the money? I, I think it will increase because their whole business, after all, is reliant on Bitcoin continuing to work. And so as the value of Bitcoin increases, they're going to want to see Bitcoin succeed even more. And so they will try to bring on people to uh, help it get there by hiring open source developers. Okay, well, it's uh, hopefully an optimistic future uh, for Bitcoin, as you say there. Uh, hopefully some potential for growth and development in that uh, developer side of things. But now, moving from the sort of uh, developer overarching network and more to some specific areas you're focused on. Now, Andrew, I understand that you've got some in specific interests in the moment in dealing with uh, side chains and offline transactions that you're focused on in your development work at the moment. What can you tell us uh, are the latest developments in those realms? Right, so most of my work right now has been focused on the Bitcoin Core wallet and supporting hardware wallets. So uh, the big project is to have hardware wallets integrated into Bitcoin Core. And uh, I've been working on that through uh, PSBT and HWI, the hardware wallet interface. Uh, and these are coming along pretty well. Uh, right now, our Blocker is really uh, the integration into Bitcoin Core itself because Core's wallet is not structured in a way that's 
conducive to hardware wallets. Mm -hmm. At least not yet. We are working on changing that. All right. So for, for the layperson who perhaps doesn't uh, fully understand the distinctions uh, on what those developments really mean, well, how will that impact uh, sort of the, the fundamentals of the network and users' interaction with the network in relation to hardware wallets? So right now, uh, if you use a hardware wallet, um, all the software, uh, so when you have a hardware wallet, you have to use a desktop software or a software on your phone uh, in order for the hardware wallet to be able to get transactions so that it can sign them. And, and you also need the software to be able to track, you know, incoming and outgoing transactions. And right now, all of those software uh, basically aren't full nodes. They all rely on uh, either some centralized service to provide the data or they rely on uh, like the SPV protocols, which don't really help with privacy and uh, have various attacks against them. Uh, so by having Bitcoin Core support hardware wallets, people will be able to use their full node with a hardware wallet and get full like everything that comes with a full node, so all the privacy and security mm -hmm. benefits, but also then also have the uh, key protection benefits of having a hardware wallet. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's an important question, Andrew, because as the uh, Bitcoin network grows, obviously there are, seem to be an increasing number of bottlenecks, whether we talk about hardware wallets, whether we talk about exchanges, uh, you know, a whole number of bottlenecks that occur in the network that prevent uh, a lot of uh, the sort of average users from in getting the most out of the sort of privacy, uh, self-control, trustless system that Bitcoin can provide when it's at full capacity and when someone runs a full node. Do you think that that potential to be able to just functionally run a full node will be accessible to the average user uh, in the near future? And other than uh, what you've just addressed, what are some of the ways you as a Bitcoin Core developer are working to address some of those issues? So one of the major problems with running a full node, uh, major problems that people keep bringing up is the time it takes to sync a full node. And it's going to get, uh, as the blockchain grows, you know, there's more data that needs to be downloaded. So the time to sync will get longer. And every major release that we do in Bitcoin Core uh, has resulted in a speed up in the initial block download, which it, it definitely helps. But and then uh, if you chart, but if you chart the amount of time compared to blockchain growth and the uh, version releases, you see that the time for initial block download is actually about the same. Um, even though the blockchain keeps growing, uh, we add a speed up, but the blockchain grows. So that speed up doesn't really help uh, at the next major release because, well, the blockchain has grown. And there's constantly improvements to uh, make the sync time faster. But we're, we're kind of fighting against the blockchain size uh, with that. Right. And the other major issue is Please go storage, uh, but we have pruning for that right now. And pruning does significantly reduce the amount of storage needed. Right. And I mean, I guess that gets back down to that key point of scalability. You know, as you continue to update and continue to make the uh, network more efficient, as the network grows, you're going to continually come against uh, those scalability, uh, speed and scalability issues. You know, you're putting a Band-Aid on a solution that uh, really needs something more permanent, which I guess is where something such as the Lightning Network might come in and getting those sort of side chain transactions, those off chain transactions that we are able to come along and actually resolve some of those you know, ongoing uh, scalability issues and sort of the mass amounts of data. Can you talk about a little bit where you see Lightning Network playing a role in all this and uh, at what stage do you think that might occur? Well, the Lightning Network will uh, definitely help with moving transactions off chain as that's its goal. So people who use Lightning will have uh, of, they'll have their transactions confirm much faster. But if we think about full nodes with Lightning, it's still the same problem. Lightning does require full nodes. <clears throat> uh, so where I see Lightning going, I'm not quite sure about that yet. I haven't been really looking at Lightning that much. Um, it's, not, it's not a particular focus of mine. 
Okay, fair enough. I mean, it uh, does seem to have, it has a lot of potential, but as you say, there's uh, still some work there to be done. Uh, but what about, uh, I, I understand you are doing some work on side chains, a little bit about interoperability uh, between uh, different networks. Is there any sort of latest developments you're working on in that field? Uh, so I actually haven't been doing that much with side chains. I have been looking into it because uh, that's my job. But um, I've been looking at interoper interoperability between Bitcoin clients with uh, PSBT. And that's, that was primarily what I've been focusing on. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the developments that are going on in, uh, in the, that field? And uh, explain a little bit for our audience about the partially signed Bitcoin transactions and, and how they work? Yeah, so uh, partially signed Bitcoin transactions or PSBT, um, they're specified in BIP 174. And the goal of PSBT is really just to have a standard way that a standard format that encapsulates everything that's needed to create a final transaction. <coughs> so uh, there have been other transaction formats that do this, uh, but none of them have been well specified or well defined. And the main, I guess, innovation of PSBT is actually having a BIP number. Uh, so people can go look at the BIP and implement it to the spec, and then they will, they will be able to send PSBTs to other clients that also implement it. Okay. Well, uh, Andrew, it sounds like uh, there is some interesting developments taking place there in the sphere. Uh, some core work still needs to be done to, as you say, deal with some of those key fundamental issues in the blockchain network and in the Bitcoin network that are coming through slowly and in time. So we'll be interested to watch that into the future and see how that grows. But I want to thank you, Andrew Chow, for coming on to Block TV today and speaking to us a little bit about that developer side of things, what's important there in the development world. In the meantime, stay with us at blocktv.com for all the latest in news and information. I'm Asher Westrop Evans. Thanks for watching. For more news and updates, follow us on Twitter.